Shadow Binders is back in stock on shopclownfish.com. That's shopclownfish.com. If you missed our Indiegogo, now's your chance. You can get the books again. And now on with the show. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Hollywood again. Yeah, somebody has to. Uh, we're going to talk about Hollywood's ideological climate. And oh, you uh, say climate, I say bullshit. Climate, uh, yeah, it's 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 getting hot over there in, in Hollywood. And I think a lot of people are going to nope out mm -hmm. because it's getting to the point where a lot of folks who made entertainment that was considered edgy back in the day or comedians who... Uh, have have uh, edgy funny. routines that were funny. Comedians yeah. that were funny. At least you stop there. Said it better than me. Comedians, Comedians that, that were funny. funny. Uh, they're getting canceled. It's a minefield navigating Hollywood. What's correct and what's not correct. And a lot of people, I think, are just going to know about. And it's interesting. Quentin Tarantino, who I would say half of his movies probably couldn't get made today. I won't watch his movies. To be fair. Yeah, you haven't. Watched I don't. Them. I'm sorry. It's not my thing. It's just not. I, I don't think his movies, a lot of them could be made today, but he's noping out. He's uh, supposedly, and he's been saying this for years, but he's going to retire. And part of the reason is because of the uh, ideological climate, the minefield that is current year Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, we're over 203,000 subs. Woo! We are not bankrolled by Hollywood. No, they uh, don't like us. <laughs> they don't like us very much. I think a lot of people, no, from my understanding from our insiders, there are all people who do like us, but they don't tell people they like us because they're afraid they're in trouble if they like us. Yeah, I'll talk about that because I'm like, this doesn't do any good. If you, if you see that cancel culture is running rampant and you see that things are getting taken too far and you keep your head down because you're afraid of losing work, you know, they're going to eat you too, right? They're just going to save you for last because mm -hmm. you're useful or you're Don't not a dessert. threat. You'll be dessert. You'll be dessert. So anyway, yeah, he had this interview with uh, Bill Maher. And um, it's interesting because Bill Maher is starting to look more and more conservative-ish. <laughs> I know, it's funny. And uh, he's got a pretty big megaphone now because all of the anti-cancel culture news seems to be coming out of Bill Maher's mouth. Like, he's actually like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And again, this is a guy who was a comedian. Mm-hmm. Uh, we could argue whether or not he was funny, but he was a comedian. And uh, this is a guy who makes a living taking, you know, pot shots at people and groups and things and, you know, for comedic effect or shock effect. And his livelihood, I'm sure, is going to be affected by this. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that people are trying to get him canceled right now. Oh, I have no doubt. Um, but he interviewed Quentin Tarantino. Now, this is coming from Bounding in the Comics. Uh, they talked about it on Variety, too, that he's, he's basically like, uh, yeah, I'm done. I'm out. But... Um, Bounding in the comics said Quentin Tarantino is calling out the rampant ideological climate of Hollywood. And yeah, he was on Bill Maher and he appeared on the show to promote his novelization of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. They make a comic book too and a board game and a video game. Mm -hmm. Apparently not. Not all that tie-in merch. Uh, during the interview, Maher brought up the press event at the Cannes Film Festival where New York Times reporter uh, Farah Nayeri asked Quentin, you have put Margot Robbie, a, a very talented actress, actor in your film. Actress, actor in your film. She was with Leonardo in Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, this is a person with a great deal of acting talent, and yet you haven't really given her any lines in the movie. I wonder, I guess that was a deliberate choice on your part, and I just want to know why that was. Why don't we hear her actually speaking very much? And and uh, Margot, I want you to also comment without being in the film and or about being in the film in this part. So basically, why are you such a toxic man and didn't let her speak? Yeah, we're just deciding without asking you why it was the way it was. Quentin bluntly responds, I reject your hypothesis. Uh, speaking with Mar, Tarantino would discuss the problems with modern Hollywood. He said, there's become uh, a thing that's gone on, especially in the last year. This is true. It's, it's definitely ramped up in the mm -hmm. last year or so, where ideology is more important than art. Mar would interject, certainly uh, to the awards. <laughs> Tarantino continued, yeah, it's like ideology trumps art. Ideology trumps individual effort. Ideology trumps good. Ideology trumps entertaining. Trump bad. I was like, I, was like, I wouldn't use that word. But, um, you know, it's just funny to me because, yeah, you're seeing it. Now, this being, you know, I'm going to say, that I do believe that there needs to be more, you know, there, there should be diversity and inclusion in Hollywood. That is not, that is nothing we're, we're questioning. I think most people don't question that. No. But for years, you know, people didn't question it because it was out there and there's no one, you know, no one's, you know, screaming about it until now. 
Um, but they are making a lot of, there are changing a lot of things to, to make it that, um, certain people are pushed out, other people brought in. Instead of bringing more chairs to the table, it's what they said they were going to do. It's just basically you're, you're switching chairs out. Um, and everything's political. Right. And I think everything should be based on actual talent, performance, et cetera. I think they should be bigger, more people in, more voices in. But it should be based on awards and such. It should be based on actual performance, not just because, you know, you're this color or that color. That I don't agree with. I'm sorry. I just don't. Who you sleep with doesn't have any, it has no relevance to whether or not you acted a part well or a movie was good. I'm sorry. Yeah. Now Tarantino thinks, he thinks that's going to pass. I don't, I don't know if I believe that. I think it, it will eventually, but I think what's going to happen is Hollywood is going to burn itself down first mm -hmm. and not have a choice, but to uh, kind of roll things back a little bit. Well, not, they're already getting their ass kicked. That's why they're coming for YouTube and all these yeah. other places because they're, they're getting their ass kicked by YouTubers. Yeah, and, but it's not just Hollywood. We're seeing it all over the place. We've been talking about comics and tabletop games and video games in the animation industry. It's basically, you know, both coasts, California and New York, deciding for the rest of the country what is politically mm -hmm. correct and what is, and they're the gatekeepers to right. all the entertainment. And Hollywood and Twitter, you know, are not indicative of where most people are. No. And you have to understand too, we're talking to people globally, not just people in the United States. And they want to speak for everyone and cancel everyone and all this other bullshit. And the executives in Hollywood need to learn real quick that Twitter and the Hollywood at large is not representative of people. It never has been, let's be honest. They've been, their, they've been up their own ass so long. Yeah, I think I think we're starting to see the pendulum swing a little bit. Like there's some flicker going on in the light bulb above their head that it's been very dim for a long time. But you know, and I talked about this yesterday uh, with the guy from Tales from the Bunker. We talked about it, and it seems like they listen to younger marketing people. Uh, who came in and then they would network with their friends who were younger journalists and they mm -hmm. all had the same political ideology. Lockstep. Lockstep. And that's how things got to this point. And they had the executives convinced, I think, that this is what people wanted because Twitter said so. And, but it's not real. Well, there used to be like people would want to see movies that made you think, but you're not allowed to think. Yeah. You're not allowed to think unless you're thinking thoughts they want you to think. It's just, and that's what, what the problem is, because where where does you know art become, you know, when it's not creative anymore. It's just it's not even art. It's just it, it's just expression. It's it's just like everything's controlled and policed. It, ironically, it becomes everything that they that the people that are pushing for it now were against twenty years ago, ten years ago. Yeah, you know, it's all censored and it's all you know only certain ideas are allowed to be seen and heard. And I'm like, for a bunch of people going on about you know. Like, they always want to come out and call alt-right Yahtzees and Yahtzees. There's a lot of, of Yahtzee behavior, I think, going around. The best art is rebellion. Mm -hmm. The best art breaks the molds. The best art is... Yeah, it's so Something weird. new. Yeah, and that's just it. I mean, look at George Lucas. Look at Steven Spielberg. Look at, you know, Quentin Tarantino when he came on the scene. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they gave us movies that people hadn't seen before. And a lot of them, you know, Tarantino films in particular were pretty edgy for the time. You know, now it's like, wow, well, everybody's seen that. But you I know, didn't. at the time, <laughs> you know, don't watch them. the stuff he was doing was like, whoa, John Travolta's in that movie. And it's, oh, my God, you know, um, you know, uh, somebody get the gimp. Uh, but it, I know what that means. You know, that's I had yeah. to explain. I had to explain the gimp. You did. I had to explain the gimp to, to Geeky uh, a couple of was about a year ago. I don't You're know. like, what's with the gimp? I actually know who else knew what it was. Squid King. And we're like, how the hell do you? OK. Yeah, and he was like, he was two years younger than he is now. Definitely not an adult, and he knew all about the GIMP. <sighs> anyway. We filled somewhere. <laughs> so anyway. And if you don't know about it, Google it. The clip's on YouTube. Uh, not safe for work. But <laughs> okay. Anyway, but yeah, so he was giving us films like that. He was pushing, pushing boundaries, and we just don't see that anymore because everything is safe and sanitized. And I think that, that does tie into why... We're stuck on repeat. Let's just go back to the same IP again and again and again. But let's clean it up. Let's, you know, Slave One's offensive now. So we take that out of Star Wars. You know, we're going to give you a kinder, gentler, more progressive Star Wars now that has no teeth and no message mm -hmm. or anything. There is no message other than, you know, hey, we're, we're the good guys. Buy our stuff. 
Yeah, because well, yeah. we said so. And if you don't so. like it, it's not because maybe the movie's bad or because there were poor decisions or maybe there was poor acting or something like that. No, no. It's because you're an istophobe because um, we made sure that, that we can blame it on other people. I'm going to start keeping track of the celebrities that are are uh, taking cancel culture and, and this, this current climate to task because it's starting to really grow in numbers because I think they're starting to realize like, I don't have a future in this environment. Like hmm. there's not, and I, maybe that's why Tarantino is saying he's, he's dipping out. He's already made his money and he's like, they're not going to let me make the movies I want to make now anyway. I just so. don't know why we can't just do good movies that have good characters that happen to be diverse and have good stories with good actors that happen to be diverse. I don't understand because now it's like everything's mandated. Like yeah. a certain percentage of this has to be this and this percentage of that has to be that. And it's, it's like, it, it, it you know, I'm not saying there's people that aren't aren't qualified that fall into those categories. But what I'm saying is, it's like you're not even putting the the story or the characters or anything ahead of it. You're just, you know, you're putting these guidelines and parameters, uh, you know, as the guiding force, not creativity, not good storytelling. Yeah, it's not art. It's it's art by committee. Right. I mean, it is. I mean, Amazon's put that. We we were gonna do a video on. We didn't do a separate video on. But Amazon's got the diversity and inclusion guidelines now. Disney's got them. They all have them where they're like. You've got to be a certain percentage of on-screen talent, certain percentage of a certain kind of people behind the scenes, but then that's going to impact your storytelling. So your story is basically, the numbers are dictating what your story is going to be about. Mm -hmm. You might have a really good story. And Disney actually said, we had a phenomenal sitcom and we passed on it because we eh, it was too white. Well, you know, here's the thing. It reminds me, like, you know, of this, like we saw with Star Wars, where it felt like it was by committee. And when things are done by committee, um, it comes across and people can smell it a mile away. And yeah. it's just like, I just think you're better off just doing really good stories, really good projects with really good people that happen to be different things. And, you know, focus on, on, on trying to go out there and find more people, but stick to trying to be creative and they're, they're, they're making sure people can't do that. Like you're put in a box. You used to be, you wanted to be outside the box, think outside the box. And now they're just like putting everything in a box inside another box, inside another box. And then they'll complain when it doesn't do well. It's suffocating. It's suffocating for everybody. So we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. Cause it's suffocating in this room. It's very hot. <laughs> it's very hot. We had to turn the air conditioner off. So it didn't, uh, didn't make noise on the mic here, but uh, we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.